Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. A treat for you today. Many, many tundras. I tried to get a first gen in here. It's not as applicable. I think most people that are looking to buy a, a third gen are comparing them to a second gen. But just so you know, I put the call out to try and get a first gen tundra. I don't know any first ten gen tundras uh, owners in the Denver area though. So I was almost gonna go buy a crappy one for like three or four grand, but I couldn't quite pull it together in time. So you're left with second gen and third gen tundras. And one of the main reasons for this video is to kind of get a bunch of measurements. So I'm gonna get a tape measure out and compare a bunch of stuff between these trucks. So we have True Max, which is the big back seat and Double Cab, which is the small back seat. Same here. Crew Max double cab. They're both uh, short bed crew maxes and long six and a half foot bed double cabs. So we're comparing them. And if you've missed some videos on the channel, this is my new Tundra. I bought this. This one is sold. Buyers coming out next week to pick it up. So I have this small window where I have both of these trucks. Both of these belong to my friend Philip. Actually, they're a double Tundra family. This is a 21 TRD Pro. This is a 16 Platinum. So, and this is a 24 Platinum and a 22 Limited. So I'll compare, I'll talk about the trims a little bit, but the, the majority of this video is gonna be kind of comparing sizes. Reason being, I've talked about this a couple times, I got the double cab, love the double cab. Probably my favorite spec of truck. I like the proportions of it. It looks a little more like a truck. I just, I love, I love this truck. Six and a half foot bed is nice. I bought this truck before uh, Cooper was born. He's one now. Ashley is actually prego with another child that is coming later this year. So two car seats plus a teenager. So this back seat is too small. I showed this on Instagram real quick. Where I sit puts this much leg room in the back seat. Can't fit a rear facing car seat on this side at all. How I drive and how anyone that's over five foot two would drive honestly. Uh, so we have to push this seat all the way forward. We could probably put one in the middle, but anyway, very, very, very cramped back here. So I made the tough decision to start from scratch on a crew max. So the crew max, bigger back seat, a lot of people, I think, well, not a lot. There's a certain group of people that really wanted me to get the six and a half foot bed. I didn't, it's a very long truck six and a half foot bed, you're into like super duty size, full full size, three quarter, one ton pickup truck size. And at that point I would just get a F450, honestly. But cavernous back seat, tons of room, you know, more back seat room than pretty much any SUV or anything back here. So super nice. So that's kind of teeing you up for what we're talking about in this video, double cab in, the second gen Tundra was actually, this, this front seat's probably similar position, but we'll try to get super technical in here. You actually have a decent amount of room. This is one where you could actually travel from left side to right side through here. You see this space? You actually have enough room. So this is a much more usable, functional back seat. Philip had this truck when I went to buy my truck. I bought it out of state, flew in, and got in, looked at the back seat, I was like, oh, wow, this shrunk a lot. So it's not super documented, but the third gen Tundra's way smaller cabs. I think the Crew Max and the double cab. So I'm gonna get tape measure out and just try and measure everything possible for you guys to give you an idea. And then the Crew Max second gen Tundra. Again, I think these front seats are pretty similar spot. So this is, this is it. I'll get into some under seat storage and stuff, which the third gens are definitely a lot better now. And just show you, show you all that. Okay, we're gonna, I think we're gonna 
I roped Philip into filming for me. So we were just getting familiarized with the two different trucks now. Well, the two different generations. Some interesting stuff. The back seats on the second gen crew maxes don't have any storage underneath, which is interesting. It's kind of a bummer. Uh, I'll show you more of that in a second, but the double cab does have storage underneath. And the third gen crew max and double cab has the same exact storage underneath. So we'll get into comparing those in a second. We've set all of the driver seats to be how we're guessing is about the same. So to compare the back seat room, the, the front seats are always gonna be good no matter pretty much how big you are, you're gonna be able to adjust it and have room. But to kind of gauge how much room you have in the back seat, we set them all. Uh, Philip, what are you, like 6'2"? Something? 6'1". Six one. Six one. I'm 5'10". We drive at roughly the same position though. Philip's a little closer and I'm actually kind of close. You know, we're not 16 year olds like in the back seat anymore, or like lean back anymore. So 6'1 driver, 5'10 driver, we're set about the same. So you can kind of use that as a gauge. I guess here I'll just get in, show you. Um, see, comfortable arm length to the steering wheel, plenty of room in here. I guess let's just do a measurement here from kind of where you'd put your elbow on the armrest to where you'd put the elbow on the armrest. We got 69 inches. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, headroom is good. We think that the second gen has a little bit more headroom. This one is a platinum with a moonroof. Mine is a platinum with a moonroof. Uh, it's got a pano roof, so a longer moonroof in that one. So front seat's gonna be good in either truck. Uh, double cab, crew max, gonna be, gonna be solid. Now the back seat is where things obviously get a lot different. The trucks, I'll show you this in a second too. The trucks, the third gen actually got longer overall. I think a slightly longer wheelbase and slightly longer overall length. But the bed stayed the same and the interior shrunk. So the hood is longer. It's kind of, kind of stupid. But we're back here and I can like stick my legs out. We have so much room in the back seat. So this is second gen crew max is the biggest back seat of them all. And let's take a couple measurements here. So we have to the back of that seat to where your butt is, we got 34 inches. And from the back here to the front of this seat is 15 inches. We'll go, um, let me see if I can put this window down. We'll get the same measurement across the side. And then the other interesting thing is that the hump down here is smaller in the second gen. It is noticeably both taller and wider in the third gen. Fords, Ford F-150s, they got a flat bottom. So Toyota got to step up their game for the middle hump. Um, across kind of where you'd put your elbow, to where you'd put your elbow, 68 this time, not quite as good. And then just kind of get a gauge of the headroom here. So again, this one does have the moon roof, but you have this whole opening kind of open and then the little moon roof bump here. So a lot of headroom, a lot of leg room, cavernous back here. So let's just jump into comparing to the third gen crew max, and then we'll compare the double cabs. So the same deal in the front seat, you're gonna have all the room you really need. Uh, it does feel a little more enclosed, like the dash a little higher, maybe a little closer, but as far as leg room, head room, everything, about the same. Again, these seats are gonna adjust up and down and everything, so we'll do Elbow to elbow. And we have 67. So roughly two inches narrower from side to side, which is 
unfortunate. The thing that I do like about this gen is it's got padded little armrest here. So when you're driving, that's actually, I've seen some reviewers just gush over this thing. I like it, it's nice. Man, Philip, you're doing a good job. Third gen platinum gets the uh, built-in sunshades, which is pretty cool, pretty cool option. There's still a lot of legroom. The crew maxes are still good, but I can't like fully extend my legs out like I did before. And this hump, if you can tell, much taller and wider. So the middle passenger is gonna straddle a bigger hump here. Uh, this is not really relevant. I'll get into some of the differences between the actual tech here in a little bit. So let's measure this. So we have 33. I believe it was 34 in the other one, but honestly, the other one feels a lot bigger. And then from front of here, we got about 13 and a half. Um, yeah, so about an inch and a half shorter from here to here. The nice thing, again, I'll get into specs uh, a little later, but let's do headroom here. So again, this is the pano roof. So it comes back, the hump comes back a little further. And I don't know if you can tell with the black interior, but I actually just have a pocket here. It gets lower and then a pocket here. So you'll actually have less headroom in the middle, whereas in the other Crew Max, you'll have the same headroom. And it, it's good, you know, again, it's gonna hit, it's gonna fit anyone. Philip sat back here, 6'1", again, and he had a little room too. So I think anything up to about a six, three, six, four guy is gonna have enough headroom back here, unless they're wearing a cowboy hat. And then one more measurement from side to side. We are at 66. So about two inches narrower. This has this thing again, which is kind of nice. Both really nice back seats, but the second gen Crew Max is, is noticeably bigger. Now, since both the Crew Maxes are pretty good sized back seats, they're very comfortable, fit car seats, fit full grown humans. The difference between the third gen and the second gen Crew Max isn't as much. Where it becomes wildly different is in the double cab. So the double cab here, I can get in and, you know, clearly less leg room than uh, the second gen or the third gen Crew Max, but I'm comfortable, like my knees aren't hitting the front. If I wanted to slide over to the other side, I could do that. Like, that's no problem. This seat is gonna be a little more upright, um, but I could, I could do a road trip back here and, and I wouldn't die, right? So let's do this measurement real quick. We got about 26 to the back and we got about nine to the front. So, not horrible, not horrible. I would say this back seat is comparable to a third gen Tacoma uh, double, whatever, crew cab. They, they, they changed the names for the Tacomas, I don't know why, but not a bad seat. Car seats fit back here. Philip actually had this truck through some, well your kids are still kind of in the car seats, not the rear facing anymore, but not, neither of them are? No. Okay, they're big now. They've grown up. When you bought it though, mm -hmm. you had, they had boosters at yep. least. Anyway, Philip's got two kids. They never complain, I don't think, about the seats. The, the back seat's more vertical than the... It's a little, yeah, you get a little better posture in those ones. Um, now this third gen Tundra, kind of comical, back seat. Back here, again, Across all the, all the cars, we tried to put the back seats as close as, as, or the front seats the same. So I could sit back here. Like I got headroom, the seating position is okay. Again, I think the, this generation is even more vertical than the previous generation to just eke out as much as they could. But my knees are touching. My feet can only fit underneath. Like there's no room anywhere. And I literally can't, like, 
I can, I guess. But you see, this space here is like non existent. Like, you can't, it's just, it's comical. It's a joke here. So, I, I feel like the seat cushion is maybe a little bigger. Like, this is a little bigger than on the previous gen. So, this will be even more exaggerated how small it is, but we got five inches here. And then we got 20, 25 inches here. So I think this to this is, according to the measurement, kind of similar. This is much smaller, but just the how cramped you are back here is insane. So the reason that I upgraded was because I literally couldn't fit a rear facing car seat here. I would have to put the seat about as far forward as it could, and I couldn't, it'd be like, be impossible. So we put the car seat over here and Ashley, my five foot three wife, her, we got to put this seat far enough to where her knees are basically on the dash. So this, if you have kids, like maybe they're out of car seats and they're small, doable. Or if you just need to transport, again, I'm a full size adult male. I can sit back here and it's, it's okay. It's okay, but car seats, no, not gonna happen. Okay, while we got the tape measure out, let's do a couple, couple more. If you didn't know, pretty much any full-size truck is gonna have greater than 48 inches between the wheel wells. Uh, so I think the Tundras both have about 49 inches. That's to fit sheet goods, four by eight sheet of drywall or plywood or whatever. So in between the wheel wells will be a little over 48 inches. And let's just get bed length. You know, these are generically known as five and a half foot and six and a half foot beds on the Tundra. This is, I would say just a little bit bigger. We'll say it's five foot six and a quarter roughly. Let me just see where this tailgate closes to. Yeah, so about exactly five and a half foot bed. Then this has got a bed mat, so it might be a little off and a topper, but we're looking at about, I would say around 22 inches bed height. Uh, and that's the bed. Compare that to third gen crew max, and I'll go to the ridge just like I did last time. This is not quite a five foot, five and a half foot bed. This is a five foot, five inch bed. So you lose about a half inch of length, or you lose about an inch of length, and the bed is not as deep either. It's about 20 and three quarter inches deep, and that's not even with the bed mat. So you lose inch and a half, two inches of height, actually. So your bed is shorter, and shallower. Some of the bed features Philip and I were talking about, they got like the, the two by six or two by eight kind of cutouts across here and here so you can kind of make a, a little platform across. You got power in the bed, lights. It's not horrible, but like the Ford power package like blows Toyotas out of the water right now. The new Tacomas have some USB options and stuff, but the Tundra is the best you can get 400 watt power in the rear. Uh, let's compare it to the long, we'll do long bed second gen. Again, commonly referred to as six and a half foot beds. This looks like, it's a little harder, we got a deck system in here. I'll put the tailgate up, but looks a little under six and a half. We'll say we're at about, oh no, it's about six and a half. Yeah, so almost six and a half on the money. The height is gonna be the same. And then to the second gen or the third gen, to the ridge. Yeah, again, about an inch shorter here. So we got a, about a six foot five inch bed. I think they say it's like a six foot six, but six foot five inch bed here and the beds will be the same height. So you got a truck that is bigger in almost every dimension, 
but slightly smaller bed, slightly smaller cab, both in length and width. So interesting. So it's not all, you know, it's not all bad. Second gens have the, the legendary 5.7 liter V8 that goes forever, uh, several million mile trucks out there. With that, this has the six cylinder twin turbo. This is a more powerful engine. It feels better, it feels faster. The 10 speed transmission is very smooth. The updated interior is super, super nice. The interiors of this truck are, are light years ahead of the previous generation, but it, it is a bummer that it got smaller. Now, one area that is just way better that I love, if you don't get the hybrids, if you do get the hybrids, this is why I don't like the hybrids in the Tundra. The, the power plant is plenty good, 37 inch tires, no gears, and it, it turns them just, just fine. So I don't, I don't feel like I have a lack of power in here at all. So, what you lose with the hybrid is all of your underseat storage. And you have a massive amount of underseat storage. Interestingly enough, the double cab and the crew max third gen tundras, this is identical. Looks like it's the same exact mold. It's the same depth, the same width, the same, it's the same, same, same. So whether you get the crew max or the double cab, you have the same amount of backseat storage. I'll show you, I moved all my stuff from here into the new truck, but you have an insane amount of storage back here. You also have pretty good storage behind the rear. You got this pocket here, you got the pockets back there. So the, they definitely improved the storage capacity of the third gen Tundras a lot. No pocket in the double cabs. The crew maxes do have the map pocket back here. So tons of room, two cup holders and stuff. The door is giant. It swings out huge. That is one of the nice things about the double cab door is in parking lots or whatever, it's a very small door. So just loading, you know, groceries or whatever in the back is pretty, pretty nice in this truck. So like I said before, Third gens, uh, exactly the same. The rear storage, I can't really tell because I have the JBL in this one, so it eats up that bit of storage. But behind here looks about the same. Interestingly enough, the crew maxes have, uh, with a five and a half foot bed, have, you know, a foot shorter bed, but you're not gaining a foot of interior room you're gaining less. You're gaining like eight to 10 inches of interior room. And I think that's largely because the Tundras have a full slide down rear window, second gen and third gen. This rear window goes all the way down. Sorry, we got, if you hear the squeaks, we got Cooper walking around in his squeaky shoes in the background. Um, so this whole thing rolls down, which is nice. If you don't know that about the Tundras, it's power rear window. So that's pretty slick. I don't know if Tundra's or Toyota has a patent on it, but that rolls down all the way. So that mechanism takes up some volume in here. So I think that's why we don't get a full foot uh, versus in here again, the seats are more vertical and they're probably closer because there's no mechanism. You just have that little portion that is power, but it just slides to the side. So. That's true across the board for the double cabs, but the amount of storage under this seat is definitely the reason I didn't go for the, the hybrid. I have get home bag, it's deep and it's wide and you can just have tons of room. So I got a bag in here, you know, get home bag, not a super, super thick bag, but a backpack and underneath that, Jet boils, washer fluid, backpacking meals, tarps, jump starters, jackets, pants. I got a pair of boots under there. So, so much, so much room to just store gear under the seat. Um, so that is huge. 
I have storage in the back under here under the diamond back as well, the cross bin, which I absolutely love. But in the cab, it's nice to have all that extra storage. So that storage, which is identical between the, the double cab and the crew max on the third gen, interestingly enough, the second gen crew maxes uh, have no storage. I think they have a little bit behind the seat, but you pull this seat up, oh, you pull this seat up, and all you have is a big hump here. Like literally no storage. There's kind of enough room under here where you could kind of wedge a jacket. And there's some aftermarket solutions actually weirdly, which you cut cut some pockets in here and then you kind of gain a little bit of storage, but it's very small. So even though the, the back seat is more roomy, I don't know if we touched on it. I think the, the third gen seats are a little more comfortable. They feel a little nicer, but this is, this is roomier, but no storage really, no storage. Uh, so that's actually a huge, huge, huge benefit of the third gens versus the second gens. Um, the second gens here do have storage underneath. This box, he has a bunch of stuff. It's about boot height. So boot on the side, it's about that height. So the storage is definitely smaller in the, the second gen versus the third gen. But for one reason or another, the second gen double cabs have storage under their seats and the crew maxes don't. I'm not positive if it's that way across the board, but I did about three minutes of Google searching and I'm pretty sure that's true across the board that crew maxes don't get any. So that's a huge, huge, huge win for the third gens in my opinion. And then I was gonna talk a little bit about trims. So we got Platinums, we got Limiteds. This is a TRD Pro, that's a Platinum. So kind of across the board, it's different, but I'll kind of summarize my, my best understanding of it, which is kind of weird. I was hoping Talon would be here largely to show this one aspect. So they have SR5s, which are basically the base trim. That's the truck that Talon just got, but you can option them up to be basically a limited. So the SR5 default screen is smaller. Uh, their cloth seats by default, um, but Talon's actually, his is optioned up in some ways to be a little bit higher spec than my Limited. Like he's got the digital rear view mirror, I don't. But the Limiteds I believe all come with the fake leather, soft tech seats. I have heated and cooled seats. The SR5 has an extra storage pocket here that is only available on the SR5 trim. And then the Limited has a little bit bigger storage in general. It's just kind of open, not covered up, no cover panels, nothing like that. Um, there are some areas that it's just not like, this is hard plastic up here. Uh, this is just kind of this, this design. So SR5, then you have a slight kind of luxury jump up to the limited, some nicer features, but you can basically spec an SR5 up to be a limited trim. Like looking inside of Talon, Talon's SR5 looks almost identical to the Limited. SR5s and Limited get the light tan, kind of gray, super light headliner and columns. Um, that's one awesome benefit to the Platinums. So then you can step up to the Platinums and 1794s and capstones. You get black interior on at least the Platinums and the 1794s. Platinum is all blacked out on the inside. I don't really know why they went with blue stitching because it's not, you know, like a hybrid or anything like that. So apparently Platinums, they went blue. I don't love the blue. I would rather just black, you know, if that was gray or even if it was red, but got a lot of blue stitching everywhere. These are now, I believe, real leather. They're at least called leather. They're not called soft text. You get a little more adjustment on the seats. You get this thigh support and you get more adjustment on the lumbar support. You get now kind of leather wrapped dash components in some spots. Uh, and then platinum by default will have the 
digital screen here. You don't get that on the SR5 or the Limited. You get like a heads up display option. And generally this is about, you can option a limited almost up to this level, but the Platinums will come with it by default. Some of the things the Platinums get is this little cover over the storage pocket here. They change the orientation of the cup holders. I don't know why. I like the, the limited and the SR5 cup holders better. And they shrunk this storage space here because they change the orientation of the cup holders just to give you some wasted space over here. But if you don't use cup holders, I guess, you know, it gives you a nicer, a nicer finish there. Um, and then I believe Platinums now get Platinums and up. Platinums basically the same as the 1794. The 1794 is the King Ranch edition of the Tundras where it's like, uh, the brown interior, I love it. It's actually my favorite spec, brown interior um, with some other accents and stuff. But you get heated and cooled seats in the back and it's kind of platinum in 1794. You get some other options like that. The thing that the platinum does better than the 1794, the 1794 is chromed out. So chrome here, chrome here, chrome handles, chrome thing, chrome everything. The platinum's largely color matched and blacked out and it has like a dark chrome surround. The Limited is full chrome as well, not quite as much chrome as the 1794. I got all of my chrome bits painted uh, black or color matched. So my Limited looks, you know, kind of like a, it's weird because the SR5 doesn't have chrome really. So it kind of looks more like an SR5 or a platinum in that I deleted all the chrome. 1794 has max chrome. So that's kind of the difference. I got TRD Pro spec. I don't have a third gen TRD Pro here, but that's gonna be a little sportier. Largely the differences are they usually black out the headlights and they usually kind of kill all the chrome. You got your special TRD Pro grill and then some suspension changes. Usually the TRD Pros aren't quite as tech optioned up, I think as like the Platinums or the 1794s, for instance, uh, Philips 2016 Platinum has power folding mirrors where the TRD Pro doesn't. So I don't know, some of those might've been options that you can get. Uh, again, it's a little hard because it's not a direct trim to trim comparison because you can option certain features on different trucks. So that's kind of a quick trim breakdown and yeah really this video i just wanted to talk about the sizing differences of double cab versus crew max and then bringing in the second generation so if you're thinking about going from one generation to the other you're thinking about buying a new truck maybe this was was helpful in some way or another uh i don't know it would have been helpful for me because i probably wouldn't have gotten the the double cab knowing kind of the needs for myself but again i think it is the sweetest looking truck i think the a double cab built like this looks better than a crew max built in the same fashion so aesthetically or if you're a single guy you don't have kids or you're very rarely putting people in the back seat i still i, I still honestly probably would say that is my favorite spec but car seats demand a crew max in my opinion. All right, so Philip doesn't really feel like being on camera, but I was talking to him a bit because uh, he's spent a little bit of time in the third gens now and obviously owns both of these second gens. And he's like, yeah, the second gens are more trucky. Like they feel more like a truck. The five sevens, very smooth power, very linear. Third gens faster, but a little snappier, like when the boost kicks in and whatnot whereas the, the five sevens are just very smooth, a little louder. Um, but the main difference is just you get in the third gens and you're like, wow, this is like a luxury car. Like the, the tech and the features and the refinement, uh, they took it several steps up. So again, a lot of this video is kind of talking crap about the third gens, but they're nicer in a lot of, a lot of ways, but they got smaller for some reason, you know. So do with that what you may. And I will do probably kind of like a full 
Tundra. I'll like act like I've never had a Tundra in some senses when I like talk about this truck. I'm going to be outlining all the modifications and everything to it, even though I have had this Tundra for two years. This is kind of a whole, a whole new thing. So that's what you can look forward to coming, coming soon. But I think that's it for now. So let me know what you think. Second gen, third gen, double cab, crew max. Which one are you going for? Crew max with a six and a half foot bed, you get a limo truck or double cab with an eight foot bed, you get an even limoer truck. A lot of options out there, but that's what I'm into. All right, take care.